and welcome to this video where we're going to look at urbanization and immigration and the regional variations across America and how it affected these places. So we look back at the map that we showed you in the last video and we can really see that the European immigration is predominantly focused in the northeast, whereas the southern states are mostly African American but then there are uh, actually very few uh, immigrants that have arrived there. The West is slightly different. Now when we look at the map in terms of the Northeast, yep, it's where the most economic and political power are concentrated. If you think about Washington DC, New York, large cities, etc. Um, it's experienced in this period the most urbanization and the most so social change. It's therefore seen as the most European. So when we talk about the consequences of immigration and urbanization, the majority of it occurs in the Northeast. The South is relatively politically and economically separate. Remember, it's dominated by the Democratic Party. Cotton is still king in the southern states. And we see in this period between 1890 and 1920, segregation start to increase. And we'll talk about that in the next video. And it's therefore a rare destination for immigrants. The occasions that they do, it tends to lead to animosity and we can use the example in New Orleans in 1891 of 11 Italian Americans being killed by a lynch mob. And of course we've got a mass exodus in the form of African Americans before World War I and it, we call that the Great Northern Migration. So the South is very different when we're talking about immigration and urbanisation. We can kind of evaluate that point by saying that, yep, in the south, sorry, in the south there was very few immigrants, whereas in the north, urbanization and immigration tended to affect the population much more. Equally, in the west, there's rapid expansion from 1865 to 1890, and it's still unfinished in this period. There are developments of some, uh, some in some cities such as Denver, boom towns such as Colorado. And of course, that attracts some immigrants. They're attracted by ideas such as rugged individualism and the population's therefore transient. And what we mean by that is they move very quickly. They follow the gold rush. They follow the other booms that happened. So the West is very much um, sort of populated by prospectors, by ranchers, by African-Americans and also Mexicans. And we see a huge divide in terms of society when we look at all three of them together. Between 1890 and 1920, America's transformed by urbanization and a huge change in the demographic. 18 Im million immigrants come to the United States from Europe, attracted by that US American dream. The birth rate was declining in the 19th century. The death rate remains at 16.5, the lowest in the world. And of course, America is changing massively because of this immigration. Now, what's the impact on society? Well, it, across America, in 1887, we've got the American Protective Association being set up, and that tries to put pressure on the government to limit immigration. And that's, they argue that white Anglo-Saxon Protestant traditions are being undermined. And there is some success for the American Protective Association. We've got the 1882 Chinese Exclusion Act, and we've got the uh, 1908 Japanese immigration stopping altogether. So we put all of those together and we've seen in the last few videos mass urbanization in the northeast in the west and in the south has lead, led to significant hot pots in these cities melting pots if you will and immigration equally has a huge consequence on the united states as well in the next video we'll be delving deeper into segregation and african-americans experience in